Good afternoon, good morning, good evening, wherever you are in Zion. I honor it the Father for each and every one of you. I appreciate you all, especially to those who have uh, just subscribed, those who are passing through, watching, listening. God bless you. God bless you. Amen and amen. To God be the glory. So today, I'm just going to get right into it. Um, you know, we've been looking at a scripture that the accuser of the brethren, who accuses them day and night. Do you, uh, I'm sure we're all very much uh, in line with that scripture according to Revelation and chapter 12, verses 10 to 11. So he says here, I'm going to read it out. He says, Then I heard a loud voice in heaven say, Now have come the salvation and the power and the kingdom of our God and the authority of his Messiah for the accuser of our brothers and sisters who accuses them before our God day and night has been hurled down. They triumphed over him by the blood of the lamb and by the word of their testimony. They did not love their lives so much as to shrink from death. So it's a place we begin to understand as we've been sharing the journey of freedom so far, looking at the dimension of the accusations that have been what released against the body of Christ, which is you. So, it's a place where there are some things that we have done in ignorance in times past without understanding the consequences of what we did. And those things, you know, we might have done them, we've walked away from it, and now those things, some of those things are causing losses in our lives. So, a lot of you have been wondering, why is, are things happening to me? Why is this going on in my life? It's like I've tried to overcome this situation and I can't seem to grasp hold of it. What is exactly happening in my life? So this is where we begin to see the scripture that says, whatever my father has not planted shall be what? Shall be uprooted. And who uproots it? The Bible declares. It says that what? If the son sets you free, you are free indeed. So the son is here to set you free and basically to uproot the things that the father has not planted. You might wonder and say to yourself, you know, but I'm already free because I'm in Christ. Very true. You are already free because you came into Christ. But then you have to understand in this dimension that because you came to Christ, the consequences of those things were not wiped away immediately. But because you became born again, it has now given that permission to the Lord, yes, to be able to uproot those things. He couldn't uproot them while you were in the world. Now that you've come into him, he has now given, you know, power has been released for that to be what? to be uprooted so you can look at it from this dimension for example because you are in school <laughs> because you attended school and registered let's look at it from this dimension right because you registered to go to school or to go to college does not automatically mean that you have learned everything the, way, the, the day you paid for your school fees no you didn't learn everything right so you have to begin to attend the lectures bit by bit is the same thing the moment you became born again now he's uprooting those things that religion placed on you before you came to the knowledge of Christ. Can you see? So he had, so the foundation has been set. So everything that was placed on you that was not of the Lord, he begins to what? Uproot it one after the other. So we've looked at it from this dimension, right? That what religion does is the religion deals with the tree. You can see they cut the tree down, but they never really deal with the roots. So most of the time they pray, I break the roots of all of it. No, it doesn't break. All of it doesn't break immediately like that. It depends on the level. So sometimes it depends on the level and the depth of what it is that they're trying to uproot. So if it's something that you know it was something that it started maybe from you and things like that yes it can give the lord that permission and break it off you but if there are things that are what ancestral in nature which means it's a bloodline uh, situation that means what it has to what uproot it bit by bit you can't just break ancestral you know things straight away in that dimension the bible tells us so according to ezekiel chapter 18 why because what the person did in 1600 did you know it 
No, you were not there. So until the Lord reveals it, then you're able to uproot it. So you just don't break it. Why? Because some people, they went and established covenants. And those covenants, they created altars. And those altars are releasing demons. So basically, in 1600, they didn't deal with the altars. In 1700, they didn't deal with the altars. In 1800, they didn't deal with the altars. In 2023, they still haven't dealt with the altars. So now you can begin to see the demons that was released with that altars, they are not easy. Easily <laughs> taken away like that. No, because the Bible tells us my words are spirit and they are life. So if the kingdom of darkness is releasing words, you know, because nobody has shut down what they built up, then the demons are still in operation. <laughs> Do you see that dimension? It's the same thing with the word of God. The word that God spoke to Abraham is still in existence today. We see it in the what? In Israel, still manifesting. And we see it in our lives because we are now joint heirs. So you see it? So now you, that's why you begin to understand Romans chapter 8, the law of the spirit versus two. <laughs> so now we're looking at the, there are two dimensions I want us to look at today. And um, I believe it's just the dimension of what? The dimension of uh, 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 seeing parents nakedness and also, uh, you know, father's concubine. I'm basically going to explain that as we go along scripturally, because for some people, they have walked in this dimension. For some of us, we have walked in this dimension in ignorance, not understanding the consequences of what we did. So now I'm going to start from Genesis and chapter nine. Can I do that? Yes, I can. So Genesis chapter nine. Uh, we're going to look at it from the dimension of Noah. So you, I believe a lot of us have probably, you know, we've, we've come into the understanding of the scripture many times that we have read it. We have read it. We have read it because while you were yet sinner, <laughs> while we were yet sinners, Christ loved us. And for that reason, you know, is now trying to uproot it because the book of, I believe the book of Micah tells us that those who are walking in wickedness, they are always up at night looking for something to accuse you of. Yeah. They're always looking for things to accuse you of. And by the time you wake up, whatever iniquity that they have already released against you, they're hoping that it comes to effect. So that those are the accusers. So they've gone and searched for what it is that you've done. Maybe your ancestors did and things like that. And they're now using it. They're bringing it up. And sometimes it's not them. It could be the fact that those demons, they have not really been dealt with. And they keep repeating itself. That's why a lot of people are caught up in cycles. I'm trying to break this. I can't can't seem to get, you know, I can't seem to escape it. What is happening? Why am I behaving this way? Why is my brother, my family, why are they behaving this way? But the truth of it is, this is the reason why the Lord has called you. So you are the first <laughs> to ever come into this dimension to break this off so that your generation because the Bible declares in the book of Genesis chapter 12, the Lord said to Abraham, so put your name where, where it says that. He says, go from your country can you see so it could be a situation of the country it could be your people and it could be your father's house so it's your country your people generation and your father's house <laughs> do you see that dimension go away from that to a land i will show you and a lot of you have obeyed so we're looking at genesis chapter 9 and i'm gonna read from verse 21 uh, right. So it says here, so let's go from verse 20. I'm going to start from verse 20. It says, Noah, a man of the soil, proceeded to plant a vineyard. This was after they came out of the ark. And it says, when he drank some of its wine, he became drunk and lay uncovered inside his tent. Ham, the father of Canaan, saw his father naked and told his two brothers outside. But Shem and Japheth took a garment and laid it across their shoulders, and they walked in backward and covered their father's naked body. Their face were turned the other way, so that they would not see their naked father. When Noah woke from his wine and found out what his younger son did had done to him, he said, Cursed be Canaan, the lowest of slaves. Will he be to his brothers? He says, cursed be Canaan, the lowest of slaves, will he be to his brothers. He also said, praise be to the Lord, the God of Shem. May Canaan be the slave of Shem. May God extend Japheth's territory. May Japheth live in a tent of Shem and may Canaan be the slave of Japheth. After the flood, Noah lived 350 years. Noah lived a total of 950 years. Then he died. So 
I know that, you know, there are a lot of, cult, uh, you know, I, I don't want to use the word culture, but there are groups of people out there. You know, I'm sure, you know, however way it is, some people might say, wow, that's that's detestable, but it's happening. There are some people, they have seen their parents naked, whether it was as a child, you know, some children, <laughs> to God be the glory, they can basically, you know, out of excitement, they have their rooms, but they can walk into their parents' room and they catch their parents doing something that, you know, their child shouldn't see. But then, then, because of that reason, can you see that the, what the accuser can be using that to accuse them? Some of you, you've seen your parents naked. I'm going to use that first dimension. And for that reason is why a lot of you, you are what? You are slaves to your brothers. You are slaves to your sisters. So you can be a family of five. And because you, maybe by accident, you did. Can you see? Cursed was released and says, hey, you'll be the lowest of slaves. Will you be the lowest of slaves? You will be to your brothers, the lowest of slaves. You will serve them. Your generation will serve your brothers. And that's brought about slavery. That's why the Bible tells us it is for freedom that Christ has set us free. Don't be yoked again into slavery. So in that dimension, majority of us, you know, we've seen that when we're children, even adults, you know, some parents, maybe they are not bothered, you know, maybe perhaps they got drunk one day or, you know, out of whatever it is they were doing, you saw them naked. And the father is saying the reason why some of you are slaves to your family members is because of that dimension. Yes, you are not alone. Majority of us, we've been there before. And it's the mercy of the father that has found us. Can you see now? Now you can begin to understand that first dimension. The second dimension is this. Some of you, you know, this is why I always encourage people that when people are going against leaders, don't do it. When you see people putting on internet, on YouTube, on whatever, you know, WhatsApp groups and all of those things. Look at what this pastor is doing. Look at what this apostle is doing. Look at what this person is doing. Look at what this leader, this government, look at what all they're doing. And you're basically speaking against authority. Can you see that dimension? This is why I always encourage people, rather than what? Rather than speak against them, why don't you pray for them? Because some of you, you have basically spoken against. Why? Because this leader, he might be going through, maybe that leader has an alcohol problem. Maybe he has a, an addiction to maybe a, a pornography. He has addiction to, 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 to alcohol. He has addiction to drugs and things like that. And you know this. And basically, you went ahead. You began to what? Share the secrets on what his weakness is. You began to share it with people. You knew of that apostle, you knew of that prophet, you knew of that pastor, you knew of that president, you knew of that prime minister, the king, the queen, and you knew of this and you began to share it. Can you see? It says that what? In the book of Genesis chapter 9, he said he was drunk, he became drunk and laid uncovered. Ham, the father of Canaan, saw his father naked. You knew their secrets, but rather than keeping their secrets, you went ahead and began to tell everybody. You went ahead and you began to speak it to everybody. You spoke it to your family or your, you know, you spoke it to your friends. You spoke it to the people around you when you ought to pray for them. So you can see why some of you are going through losses and curses because of what you did. Can you see that dimension? So this is why I always encourage when you see leaders and they are basically going through something rather than quickly taking your phone, recording a video. Look at this mess. Look at what they are doing. Is this right? Is this this? Is this that? And then you begin to post it and you're blasting. What are you doing it for? Looking for views? What are you doing it for? Looking for what? Looking for subscribers? It's absolutely wrong. It is very wrong. So you can see, because Ham refused to protect the leader, the father, he was now cursed. He became a slave. Can you see? For you, because you saw the nakedness of your parents, you became a slave. So this is why the father is always telling us to what? Be intentional about praying for those in authority. Can you see that dimension? You know, he wants you pure. He wants you blameless. He doesn't want you to what? To walk in the dimension of all of these things because you know why? You are in a higher dimension. The dimension of the Father. Can you see? 
You see as the Father sees. You see as Christ sees. So when you see all of these things, wow, you know, people are talking about this, this, this prophet. Wow, this prophet, he went, wow, he's in immorality. You go to your secret place. Father, I speak the mercy of God over that leader. Oh, this leader is in what? A drug addiction? Father, I pray for this leader. The Bible says, I delight in mercy. These people that are doing these things, they are not showing mercy. But he's looking to you. Because he can trust you. So that is why the Lord can't share the secret of leaders with so many of you. Because you'll be so quick to record a video. Put it right there on YouTube. He can't share what that person is going through. Because you'll be right there. Quickly sharing it with people. And some of you, you don't even have the jurisdiction. <laughs> Do you see that dimension? You don't have the jurisdiction. Uh, you know, you're there. You know, it's, it's amazing. Order in the body right you're there you're basically you know you're just a member you're there criticizing the pastor you're there just a member you're criticizing the apostle and the father is saying you don't have that jurisdiction because if i need to correct that president i will send the person who has the authority can you see daniel when nebuchadnezzar was misbehaving <laughs> do you see how daniel approached the king oh my king i wish it, this was for your enemies and he basically spoke the word if it had been some people, boom, on YouTube, boom, on Instagram, or Instagram, sorry, all over the place and begin to share. It is absolutely wrong. That's what it means. Can you see? The Bible says that what? Rather than him covering the father, rather than him covering the secrets of that person, the same thing applies. <laughs> Husbands and wives. Wives basically going right there, doing all manner of things. Husbands too, doing the same thing. Can you see that dimension? If the Father has given you the permission, go ahead and do it. But don't go in what? If it's not your jurisdiction and he hasn't done it, just because you're so zealous about the things of Christ, don't venture into it. Stay away from it. And he will bless you. So a lot of you, can you see Genesis chapter 9, verse 25, all the way to 20, what? 7, has been released because of your what? Ignorance. We've been there before. <laughs> In ignorance, we've been there before. It's in the mercy of God. So now the father is what? Is basically bringing reconciliation into that. Yes? So that is the first group of people. Let us look at the second group of people. Now, it says here, let's go to Genesis chapter 35. And this is what it says in Genesis 35. <laughs> wow, to God be the glory, right? <laughs> Amen. So, the Bible says here, we're looking at verse 22. And we're going to read, uh, it's, 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 a beautiful, uh, it's a beautiful read. And it says here, in verse 21, it says, Israel moved on again and pitched his tent uh, beyond Migdal. Eda. While Israel was living in the region, it says Reuben went in and what? And slept with his father's concubine, Bila. And Israel heard of it. Can you see? It says Israel, Reuben went into what? His father's concubine, Bila. And Israel heard of it. But Israel, Jacob that is, did not say anything until Genesis chapter 49. So it was time <laughs> when everybody was being called forward. All right, children, come on in. All right, sons, come on in. It's time to be blessed. I want to bless each and every one of you. Line up, boys. <laughs> line up, boys. I want to basically bless each and every one of you. So they all stood in line. They were ready to get blessed. Now, this is the blessing that began to come along. You can see in Genesis chapter 35, Jacob said nothing. In Genesis chapter 49, now listen, it says here, then Jacob called for his sons and said, gather around so I can tell you what will happen in you, to you in days to come. Assemble and listen, sons of Jacob. Listen to your father, Israel. Reuben, <laughs> you are my firstborn, my might, the first sign of my strength, excelling in honor, excelling in power. Ha. Then he went on to say in verse 4, Turbulent as the waters, you will no longer excel. For you went up onto your father's bed, onto my couch, and defiled it. Can you see? <laughs> so look at how he basically honored Reuben by basically speaking the essence of Reuben. But then, because of what Reuben did in Genesis and chapter 35, he did what? He was 
cursed. He said, no longer shall you excel. No longer for you went up into your father's bed onto my couch and what? You defiled it. Now, this would be a mystery to a lot of people <laughs> because there are people, you know, when we were all young, right? We used to invite people into the house. They would come into the house. They would basically come and rejoice. But there are a lot of people who have what? You have probably had sex in your father's house. You have had sexual immorality basically in your father's house in your mother's house in that in your partner's father's house in your partner's mother's house you went onto the couch you went onto basically by having by committing immorality whether you are a husband or your wife and you're basically there it is absolutely wrong can you see see the losses that happen it says you will no longer excel you wonder why you're not excelling because under your father's roof, you're not supposed to do that. You're dishonoring his house. Under your mother's roof, you're basically dishonoring his house, a house. So a lot of you, you might think, hey, it's my mother's house. It's my father's house. I can bring my girlfriend home. I can bring my boyfriend home. And you basically committed all immoralities under that while you were there. And the father is saying the reason why majority of you are not excelling is because you went onto your father's bed, onto your mother's bed, onto your what? Onto your father's couch, onto your mother's couch, and you defiled it. The Bible says there is therefore now no condemnation. For those who are what? In Christ Jesus. And the Lord is helping you to understand that you've basically repented of, you know, all immoralities and things where you've turned away from it. And he has forgiven you. But he's showing you the root of why you are not excelling. So he's basically removing the roots one after the other. It's a root to excel. You're not excelling. Why? because so a lot of you might look at it like wow i didn't even think of it that way i didn't think of wow so that can yes i'm sure you know there is a movie with uh, uh, uh bernie mac uh, before he went to sleep you know and it was a story of uh <laughs> yeah when the when he brought uh, when the the daughter uh, the daughter brought a son you know a son-in-law home <laughs> you know the son-in-law home and they was like wow you know and they were like you know and and both sorry both of them they came home and they wanted to you know they wanted to, they wanted to basically sleep together in the same bedroom i'm sure a lot of us will probably seen that movie before it's called guess who you know and and upon bringing the boyfriend home they wanted to sleep together they were so happy and things like that and bernie came in and was like nope not under my roof nope not at all not under my roof and he had to separate the daughter and the, and the girlfriend he said nope nope not even while you're married no no not under my roof and that was the dimension the father was helping me to understand that it is absolutely wrong because a lot of you you know there are some pe there are some places that they consider this like there is nothing wrong with it there is nothing as long as we're married well it's my parents house but according to the word of god we are by the word today it says that what Turbulent as the waters, you will no longer excel. For you went up into your father's bed, onto my couch. And what? Defiled it. Onto the bed. Onto the couch. You defiled. In the father's house. On the bed. In the father's house. On the couch. Can you see? So he says there is no, therefore now no condemnation. That's why I said we've all been there. And the father is basically showing mercy to a lot of us. And the father is saying, he says, because your brothers are going through the same thing. So it is not just you. It's not to bring shame because he's trying to remove shame and disgrace. And because the accuser keeps using this dimension to accuse you is the reason why he's what? He's releasing that in itself. So you can see why a lot of people are not excelling. You can see a lot of a lot, why a lot of people are what are basically in what in slavery because of what they did. The, the dimension of Noah, the dimension of who, the dimension of Jacob. Now we see another dimension, right? Because this goes for a lot of people who have you know. I I want to basically just with compassion share this. You know, there are a lot of people who have been either molested by their parents and you know uh, and basically they they you know incest basically and it's a place where the father you know 
for whatever it is that you went through with your father basically coming against you and mother coming against the son and things like that it was not the will of the father for you to go through that in itself no not at all for what that man did or what that woman did was absolutely wrong it was wrong for what they did and the lord has already what has already released his what his judgment concerning it and this is the reason why you see apostle paul when he spoke it in the book of first corinthians and chapter five he spoke about what he spoke about incest and this is what he says he says it is actually reported that there is sexual immorality among you and of a kind that even pagans do not tolerate a man is sleeping with his father's wife Can you see and you are what proud so it's not just a man sleeping with his father's wife a man sleeping with his daughter a daughter do- you know a a, 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 a a mother sleeping with her son and he says and you're proud you know shouldn't you rather have gone into mourning and put out you know of your fellowship the man who has been doing this for what my part even though i am not physically present i am with you in spirit as one who is present with you in this way i have already passed judgment in the name of our lord jesus on the one who has been what doing this so when you are assembled and i'm with you in spirit and the power of our lord jesus christ is present hand this man over to satan for the destruction of the flesh so that his spirit may be saved on the lord's day can you see so now the accuser it was not your fault your father did it to you your mother did it to you now the accuser of the brethren you know he's not basically looking at it basically like hey your father did that no do you know what he's doing he's accusing and saying hey you know it happened to you and you did this and it's all incest and because the father or the mother has not repented of it and because you at the same time though you might have you might you might still be unforgiving towards that situation you can see why he said destruction of the flesh sickness in the body sickness so the sickness you might probably be sensing what you're going through in the body is not because maybe because you're still holding on to unforgiveness you have not even forgiven yourself you haven't forgiven the person who did that to you because the judgment has been released onto that person and the lord doesn't want you to share in that judgment for a lot of you you might be married to somebody who actually you know you're going through all of these things in the body and you're wondering why am i going through this sickness and maybe the wife didn't tell the husband the husband didn't tell the wife that hey you know i was molested and now because you're married look at that oneness you're sharing in that inheritance and the father wants to break it off by showing his mercy yes by showing his mercy so we're speaking in three dimensions seeing parents nakedness with leaders at the same time basically sexual immorality in your father's house in your mother's house or you went over to your partner's house and you went and basically began to defile that in itself you can see why you're not excelling and for those who have been what molested incest happening the father is reversing so today i want us to share a prayer of repentance and also a prayer of mercy and what of forgiveness because the lord wants to remove the roots he says whatever my father has not what planted i will what i will uproot Can you see it? Because he wants to close. He says, I am the gatekeeper and I'm leading you out. Can you see? So because you became born again, now he has access and the right to remove it. So once and for all, you can excel. Once and for all, you can go forth in victory. So we're going to share this prayer in general, right? So if, if this applies to you, let us pray this together in the name of Jesus. Just repeat after me as we pray together. Father, in the name of Jesus, I repent of seeing my parents' nakedness. I repent of sharing the secrets of my leaders with people that I ought not to. I repent for having sexual immorality in my parents' house or in any house that I've been in belonging to other people's parents. Every agreement 
with the curses, every agreement, with every immorality that manifested, I cancel it and I repent of the rewards in Jesus' mighty name. And for those who have been, you know, molested, just repeat this prayer after me. Father, in the mighty name of Jesus, I forgive every person that molested me. I bless them with your mercy. And I forgive myself for holding on to unforgiveness. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen and amen. So I just want to pray this prayer by the authority of the word. So I'm going to start from Genesis chapter 9. The Bible declares, and it said he cursed Canaan. So I declare over each and every one of you, every curse that was made upon your life, making you a slave to your brethren and to your brothers and to your family. I break the powers of that curse because on the authority of the word in Galatians 3 and 13, it says, cursed is the one that was hung on the pole. Christ has been cursed in my place and in your place. So by the authority of the word, I break the powers of that curses and I break the powers of that slavery. I remove you from the dimension of the slavery and I reconcile you back to Christ. I declare that you are free because the the son has set you free and I thank God for the authority that you're going to begin to prosper in every dimension of your life and I also speak by the authority of Genesis and chapter 49 everywhere that you have suffered losses in excelling I declare that you will no longer suffer any loss I declare that you are excelling you are prospering everything that you lay your hands upon your business your ministry your marriage your finances everything pertaining to you that as from this very day that the curse is broken you are excelling begin to excel begin to manifest the excellency of the spirit that you are being poured out upon all creation they will know that you are excelling because the bible says in the book of daniel and chapter three and it said in chapter six and it was found with excellent spirit i declare that the manifestation of that excellent spirit is manifesting upon your life and by that word, you're going forth in complete victory. No longer shall you be yoked into slavery. No longer shall you be yoked into slavery. No longer shall you be yoked into slavery. Serving people that you're supposed to what? To walk in the dimension of a higher frequency in glory. I declare because the Bible says, according to Daniel chapter 6, it says that what? In verse 2, with three administrators over them, one of whom was Daniel, the satraps were made accountable to them so that the king might not suffer loss. No longer will you suffer any loss because Daniel so distinguished. So I declare that you're distinguished and you are walking in the excellence of the spirit by the authority of the word. I declare also according to 1 Corinthians and chapter 5 and verse 1 to 5, every spirit of destruction that was sent against your body, every spirit of destruction that was sent against your body, I Break the powers of that spirit. I break the powers of that destruction and I declare that you're prospering in health as your soul prospers. I reconcile your health back to Jesus. And I declare according to Genesis and chapter 49 where it says that you because you went onto your father's couch because of your repentance today the Bible says you have come to Zion the city of the living God to the numerable company of angels. I release the angels to bring forth the restoration of everything that you have lost in the days of the canker worms, the palm worms and the locust worms. I declare restoration over your life, over your your health over your mind over your body over everything that pertains to you from this very day i declare that you're flourishing in jesus mighty name and i bless you all with the mercy of god i bless you all with the mercy of god in jesus mighty name amen and amen you all are the blessedness of the father 
I honor every dimension of you. I honor the Father for every dimension of you. In Jesus' mighty name, amen and amen. You all are blessed. You all are glorious. You are the blessedness of the Father. You're going forth in triumphant victory. No longer will you be looked down upon. No, because you are excelling in every area of your life. In Jesus' mighty name, amen and a name is. So I bless you, Abba Father, because it is already done. It is already done. It is already done in Jesus' mighty name. Amen and amen. So Father, I thank you because it is finished. I thank you because it is finished. You are the blessedness of the Father and I bless the Lord for you. Go forth because you're going forth in victory. Thank you, Father, because I know it is finished. It is finished. <laughs> it is finished. And you're walking victoriously. You are the blessedness of the one who called you right from the very beginning. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. God bless you all. Stay blessed in the presence of the Father that you are. Amen. <laughs>